joined we are by uh, Philip Bax and Russo uh, for, to talk about the next uh, auction to be held here in Geneva just in a few days. Uh, we're just neighbors actually and we just dropped by to meet Mr. Alexandre Godby who's going to talk to us about some of the main uh, lots put uh, on auction. Um, hi, Marc-André, good to have you with us, and I'm delighted to speak with you mm -hmm. of uh, some uh, some of the lots that we have in our upcoming Geneva Watch Auction 9 that will be held in Hotel La Reserve on 11th and 12th of May. Let's start with uh, independence. Mm -hmm. Who is the father or the grandfather of independent watchmaking? George Daniels, one of the greatest watchmakers uh, ever and certainly the greatest watchmaker of the 20th century, a self-taught watchmaker. He never went to watchmaking school. He started learning watchmaking just by disassembling and reassembling watches. And at the end of the 1960s, he decided that he wanted to make his own watch. Once again, somebody who had never made a watch in his life. And he didn't just make a watch. He made everything. He taught himself how to make the case, the dial, the screws, the base plates, everything, everything, everything. And he came out with a detent chronometer escapement tourbillon for his first, uh, for his first watch in 1968. Once he had invented and perfected the coaxial escapement, and let's not forget, he's the first watchmaker to invent a new escapement and better the Swiss anchor escapement in over 250 years. Mm -hmm. And in 1987, he decided to go... Um, to, to attack the task of his greatest tour de force, creating a grand complication. And in this watch, like in all his other watches, he first designs the dial, balance, legibility, harmony, and attractiveness. So he creates the dial, then the movement. And this piece is his first and only watch to feature not only a perpetual calendar, but it's an instantaneous perpetual calendar, meaning all the functions jump precisely at uh, midnight. It has a um, minute repeater designed by himself. It has a thermometer. It has a um, tourbillon with coaxial escapement, of course, equation of time, power reserve, and an annual calendar which indicates the the number of, uh, of days in that, in that specific um, uh, month. Now, what's amazing and really important is Daniels considered this watch so important that he never sold it. He considered it to be his chef d'oeuvre, mm -hmm. his masterpiece, and he never, never accepted to, to part with it. It was always in his pocket. It first appeared in the market in 2011 after George Daniels' death. I think owning a George Daniels for any collector, watch collector, it's the neck plus ultra. Yeah. But owning the grand complication of George Daniels is just one step yeah. above. There are not two of these. Exactly. There's the one and only. Yeah. And the one and only. And it's still functioning perfectly. And it means that the last watchmaker and the first watchmaker who ever touched the movement was Daniels himself. a pleasure. There was a respectful silence yeah. when we listened to this watch. <laughs> to celebrate the 35th anniversary of the invention of the coaxial, in 2010, he set up with uh, his apprentice, Roger Smith, to create a wristwatch whose design is fully inspired by his uh, four-minute tourbillon pocket watch in um, using his slim coaxial. So in this piece, timepiece, made in 35 pieces, yellow gold, we have a power reserve at the top part of the dial, an offset date at the left side, and uh, sub-seconds on the right. Daniels loved having offset uh, displays. He thought it brought a bit of playfulness uh, and ease of legibility to the, uh, to the dials. And obviously, the movement is a sight to behold. The gilt finish that Daniels is known for uh, with his coaxial escapement and everything once again fully handmade. And this one, watch is number 24 of the limited number of 35 pieces mm -hmm. made. We thought that 
considering its importance, uh, we put an estimate of above 1.5 million Swiss francs with no high, because how can you put a high estimate on such a such a masterpiece and such a unique piece? The anniversary watch, the estimate is 180,000 to 360,000 Swiss francs. Yeah, I was feeling moved being able to touch these pieces, I have to say. So in this, uh, this season's sale, we have a section dedicated to Vacheron Constantin and explain why this 260 plus year old brand is so important and relevant. So we have in the sale an amazingly well conserved and rare reference 4178 chronograph, which is most probably the, the chronograph or the timepiece that Vacheron Constantin is the most associated with, with a typical fan shaped or teardrop lugs, slim uh, case uh, to a uh, two counter chronograph. Now this watch from 1954 is quite amazing, obviously its condition, but it has a Turler sign dial, Turler being a Swiss a retailer at Vacheron, it's extremely rare. They were much more um, conservative in their in their partnerships, and this watch comes with its original Gay Frère bracelet with uh, Vacheron uh, stamps. But that's not it. It comes, and this is where it becomes interesting, with its original box signed Turler and paperwork indicating that this Vacheron Constantin was sold at Turler in 1954 with a gold bracelet. So it's an original gold bracelet. It was sold on May 8th, 1954, and you have the date inscribed on the back. What happened on this date of May 8th, 1954, that this person was, what were they celebrating an anniversary, a deal, a graduation? Somebody thought that this watch was special enough to buy it and have it engraved for it and then be passed on from uh, generation to generation. Next piece, and this is our piece de resistance and one of the most exciting watches I've had the pleasure of handling, is the Don Pancho, which was the nickname of the owner. In 1935, end of 1935, the Madrid-based retailer Brookkin contacts Vacheron Constantin because they have a commission from their client wishing to have a minute repeater with the slide on the right for ease of use, tono case with crown at 12 as to keep mm -hmm. the style of the watch, a calendar and full Arabic numerals. The person who had uh, commissioned this watch, Francisco Martinez Linao, who has his name, his initials enameled on the back. We found, thanks to Vacheron Constantin's archive department, the creative ping pong going back between the commissioner and Vacheron on what he wanted, what he didn't want. He wanted the full Arabic numerals because he had mines in Chile and he wanted to have something extremely legible. He wanted to have two dials, one with the luminous style, one with breguet uh, numerals. Uh, we have the documentation that indicates that this watch came originally mounted with the radium dial. However, when we saw the watch, it was, let's say, um, the, the movement was stuck and the dial had aged. We asked Vacheron Constantin if they could restore the movement using original components as much as possible. And if they could redo a dial using the same techniques as what they used in 1936. So basically the watch today is mounted with the new dial created by Vacheron Constantin, but we also have the original dial that was mounted on the watch. So the new owner can decide which dial he would like to have on the watch, the, the new interpretation or the original one. Before the 1950s, we know of only three wristwatches that have a calendar function and a minute repeater. There's a Patek Philippe with a calendar function and minute repeater in a 96 case, the reference 96 case, which is in the Patek Philippe Museum. There is one which was commissioned by a jeweler called uh, Schultz in New York in the 1930s, which has 
a calendar, minute repeater, and a chronograph. And we have this, the Don Pancho, which has a retrograde date, which the other two do not have, yeah. a day indication, and the minute repeater. <laughs>